So, speed cameras. One of the most controversial, unpopular, universally disliked. I think the only thing in the UK that is probably more disliked than our current government or governments in general really is something like speed cameras. Nobody likes them. I have not heard anybody compliment them at all. When it comes to motorists, there is all these conspiracy theories about instead of them trying to make things safer, it's just basically another road tax, another way for our freedom as motorists to be impeded by the government. You know, yet again, another thing that the man is forcing upon us. But is the truth to this? Do speed cameras actually make road safer? Or are they just a money printing machine for the police and local councils? Let's have a look at this. So, there's an article here on roadangel.com. Now, I've looked through a few articles of this and I'm also going to go from my own personal experiences and my also my own personal opinion when it comes to speed cameras. But, for those that don't know, speed cameras are basically basically devices by the side of the road to measure whether people are speeding or not there's a few different ways you can do this but in general that is the traditional one so let's say in the uk for example the rule is let's say it's a 30 mile an hour road if you're caught doing 10 percent plus three miles above that so the limit there is 35 miles an hour if you're caught doing 36 of a speed camera it will take a picture of you it will take a picture of your car and it will also then you'll get a fine through the post you'll have to do a speed awareness course or maybe you'll get points in your license depending on your previous convictions etc things like that that's how it works in the uk now there are other ones such as average speed cameras which <laughs> we'll get to them don't worry but let's just go with the traditional speed camera here does it actually reduce accidents does it make things safer like the government tried to claim well, these are not a new invention. In fact, I think they've been in since, since about what, late 90s, 97, I think they came in, something like that. But let's have a look. Let's have a look at the factors here. So, looking at the article from roadangelgroup.com. So, there's the deterrence effect. The sheer presence of a speed camera at the side of the road deters road users from speeding with a potential thought of receiving a ticket. Reference studies do show a decrease in speeding violations in areas with signed visible speed cameras, which is true. I imagine that the speeding numbers will go down because people don't want to get caught, and these things are painted bright yellow by the side of the road. They're very easy to spot. They're not easy to sorry, they're not hard to spot at all. So you'll see them there straight away. So I do agree with that. What I disagree with though is the fact that they're only used in certain bits. The amount of times that you will see, you'll go through a speed camera will be someone ahead of you and they'll go through ahead of you and as they'll slow down before the speed camera and then they'll speed up right away after so yes it does end up reducing the amount of time they're speeding but it doesn't really stop them speeding it just stops them speeding in that part of the road so it does work but it doesn't work completely it only works in small bite-sized chunks effectively if people are going to speed they're going to speed anyway they'll just do it in a way they'll try and not get caught no one wants to be nobody wants to be caught speeding nobody wants to be caught speeding but they'll still do it when they can get away with it reduction in road traffic accidents the impacts of speed cameras on road safety has been the subject of extensive research in the uk with several studies indicating they are effective in reducing both traffic accidents and fatalities and again i agree with that but I don't think it helps throughout the entire road. It just helps with that one stretch. That's simple as it. There's a few different sources here as well. Uh, one for the PNC, one for the London School of Economics, and Science Direct as well. So there are, there is, there is evidence behind this, and that, and that's absolutely fair enough. I understand that, um, but I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. And then there's all the criticisms, which I can go into about the article in fairness. You know, I can go through the criticisms of it, absolutely. So, yeah, like I said, it doesn't reduce it completely because people will still do crazy things on the roads. And road traffic accidents in the UK are not going down, they're only going up. There's more cars on the road. The roads in general are getting worse. Things like potholes are getting worse. I mean, that's something we've covered in another video. But let's talk about the average speed cameras. So, average speed cameras, instead of going through a specific point they will take your average speed from start to finish of an affected area an example right now in the uk would be on the m1 between just north of sheffield down to leicester it's pretty much all 50 mile an hour zones instead of the usual 70 mile an hour national speed limit that's because they're doing roadworks there to try and put more um, more refuge areas basically in, in the side of the road which that's a whole topic on itself and i've done some videos about that but let's not talk about that the, the important point for this video is that that's a 50 mile an hour speed limit there so if you were to example for example 
go on an average speed, it'll take your average speed on the time, it will flash you, it will give you a warning, it will catch you effectively if you go over that between those bits. Now there will be bits during the actual uh, the actual roadworks for example which take your speed at specific points. Most people will slow down for that and, if, and in my experience everybody slows down for these average speed things. I very rarely see anybody speeding and when they do they get flashed and you can see the cameras going which is never a nice thing to see when you're around it but it's obviously it's not you because you're not speeding. Unless you are being a naughty boy in speed, that's different. So I feel like those average speed cameras work a lot better, but you can't have them on the whole motorway. It would just be a disaster. I mean, we've talked about smart motorways and how the UK is effectively abandoning the expand planned expansion of them. And that's a whole new video in itself. I've already covered that. But the, the long and short of it is, is, for me, one of the unofficial reasons is because people don't adhere to these speed limits. When it goes down to 40 miles an hour, you'll see people flying still at 70 because they don't get punished for it. So. In my experience, I will admit that speed cameras, I, I don't think they're a good thing really. I, I feel like they don't, well, they just punish people unnecessarily and it doesn't really reduce accidents. If you, the only way to do that fully is to just go and do the entire road with it. You can't because the cost of that would be unbelievable. I mean, can you imagine living in that much of a dystopian society that everywhere has speed limit cameras in? No, absolutely not. So they might reduce accidents in certain parts, maybe some particularly dangerous parts, but the way they're set up, the way they're set up, I mean, Huddersfield, where I live, there are some speed cameras around here where it's like, it's downhill going from a 40 zone to a 30 zone to 40 to 30 to 40 to 30, and there's speed cameras everywhere. And if you go 40 in one of these 30s and not realize that it's changed, you're getting flashed points on your license, speed awareness course, fine, you know, it's all coming through to you in the, in the post in a couple days. And then you've also got mobile speed cameras. They're the last one I want to talk about. Mobile speed cameras are 1000% a money making device for me. They park them by the side of the roads. They're effectively just a van with a speed camera on and they put them in the most innocuous places in between parked cars. You can barely see it. I know they'll say, oh, we've got all the high vis and stuff on, but you can't see it from behind them. It just looks like a regular Van. And again, people will rightly say, oh, well, you shouldn't speed if that's the case. And I agree, speeding is not a good thing, but come on, when you're doing 36 in a 30 zone, I mean, really? I know the little boy on the advert will tell you that you've got a much higher chance of surviving if it's if it's a, you know, a lower speed that he gets hit by, but come on, man. That's by a school, you know, don't be an idiot around a school, especially at kicking out time or get dropping off time. I understand that, but these will just be parked in places that are designed to catch you out blind corners, parked cars, narrow roads. That is 100% a money-making device for me, and there's loads of examples of that when it comes to councils. So, do road ca do speed cameras make roads safer? They do, but only in small parts. Statistically, they help, but outside of those areas where they're actually covering, for me. They don't do anything. People are going to speed anyway, it's not going to reduce it and that's backed up by the overall data in the UK. Car numbers and driver numbers are still going up, accidents are also going up with it. Speed cameras, if you compare the data pre-speed cameras and post-speed cameras, something that Top Gear did a long time ago, doesn't, doesn't work. It's not reduced accidents, all it's done is lined the government's pockets. Which is exactly what it was designed to do in my opinion. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below guys, and for much more motoring explained and opinion videos, keep it tuned here to themotoringchronicle.com. See you very soon guys, have a good one.